So please pardon my my voice this afternoon. I'm still managing a sore throat. Uh, salamat po sa mga prayers, but I'm really amazed on on how gracious ang ating ang ating church sa sa kanilang concern para sa isang may sore throat. I've never heard much recommendations and and uh, and uh, mga gift of candies na nakakatulong perhaps para para ako ay makapagpatuloy sa pagbibigay ng lecture but nonetheless I'm I'm really grateful and it only goes to show as well how loving and uh, gracious our church is so sige let us let us start with our lecture in his book the first 90 days si Michael D Watkins offer proven strategies for professionals to onboard in their new jobs quickly and effectively. He argues that what you do in the first 90 days of your work is crucial to your success because it will either make you or break you. Some of the strategies na ibinigay niya in this book is number one, you should be able to accelerate your learning. You should know what to learn. You have to learn the right things and you have to learn it as fast as possible. Securing early wins na kapag kakapasok mo lang, kailangan mapakita mo na that you are capable and you are doing something and you are already making progress. And also, para sa mga boss natin, you have to negotiate your success. Yun yung sinasabi niya. We come into the job with the, with the responsibilities given to us, but we have to be realistic. Kasi first 90 days pa lang. But Calvin did not intend to become a successful professional, nor to even make a name for himself as a pastor. His concern was for the glory of God, the gospel of Christ, and the Spirit's work in the church. But little did he know that 500 years from where he lived, that we would still talk about his surpassing contribution. So welcome to our third lecture on our Sabbath School in our short series on the life of John Calvin. In this session, we'll talk about his ministry and work. Pero sa totoo lang, um, much can be said about the ministry and contribution of John Calvin. So ako personally, I divided the sessions into two lectures, but I do recognize that even two sessions would not even be enough enough for us to be able to cover the entire spectrum of what John Calvin has given to the church. But we will try our best to give consideration sa mga highlights and hopefully ito rin po ay magbigay ng encouragement sa atin to do further studies and to read about John Calvin. So, Here's what we're going to look at today. So first, we'll look at his ministry and work sa kanyang exile to Strasbourg. Yun yung first point natin, which is cancel Calvin. Second, we will look at his ministry and work when he returned to Geneva. Yun naman yung second point natin na tatawagin natin for this lecture, call back Calvin. And then afterwards, we'll consider some lessons that we can get out of these two things that we will be looking at. So, kung babalikan natin yung past lecture, we knew that Calvin became a pastor in the Church of Geneva. Aside from caring for the flock, they drafted a confession and as well as implemented church discipline within the church. At we, we, we left off by saying na, yun yung ginawa nila. Pero ang tadong, did the church in Geneva really accepted the reforming efforts of John Calvin and the Protestant preachers? The answer is no. Calvin and Farrell's reformation efforts were met with strong opposition. Points of disagreement were found on church discipline, Ayaw ng Church of Geneva ang discipline because they wanted to live the way they want to live. They wanted to enjoy freely the grace of God in a way that is sinful. 
the reinstitution of the holy days. Yun din yung isa sa mga pinag nila. Primarily, dito sa context na ito, ay yung reinstitution ng observance ng Easter Sunday. Alright? And they also had a problem in the way they are administering the Lord's Supper. But for this one, medyo minor lang because Calvin and Farrell did want did not want to use the unleavened bread. Or yung parang um, parang siyang host na ginagamit in Roman Catholic churches. So ayaw nila Calvin yun. Pero they could have given way para for this. Pero basically ayaw nila yun. And that has been a serious issue para sa council in Geneva. So what the city council did, they called for a meeting and they decided that the Protestant preachers be banished from the city. So dito na pinatalsik yung mga Protestant preacher and that includes Calvin and William Farrell. Walang trial that took place. They did not hear Calvin and Farrell. They tried to appeal to the city council, pero hindi sila pinakinggan. In fact, they were barred from entering the city. So in response to the decision, John Calvin said, Very well, it is better to serve God than man. If we had sought to please men, we should have been badly rewarded. But we serve a higher master who will not withhold from us his reward. They were likely disappointed, but they were composed somehow. They were comforted on the fact that they were not making a name for themselves. They were not there to, to prove that we have the absolute authority and the power within this church. No, they were just there to simply serve Christ as their master. Pero sila sabi nila rito, if our desire is to please men, uncalled for itong ginawa sa amin ng Church of Geneva. But no, they know exactly that they were faithful unto Christ. And therefore, they sought the reward that comes from our Heavenly Master. So with the weight of uncertainty, hindi alam ni Calvin as to what will happen after being ejected from the Church of Geneva. So he sought back to his he sought to go back to his original plan of studying and of writing. Siyempre, babalik lang din tayo dun. It's like Peter after the after the, the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. I'm gonna go back fishing. Parang ganun siguro. He had no plans, at least in the immediate term, of becoming a pastor once again after nung unsuccessful stint niya as a minister of God in Geneva. So after Geneva, he stayed for a few months in the city of Basel. So kung matatandaan natin yung map na naginwa ko, yung madupit na map na pinakita ko last week. No? So bumiyahin siya northward. Pero kung dumire-derecho siya nun, makakarating siya ng Strasbourg. But before getting to Strasbourg, doon siya pumunta sa city of Basel. So it's like going to Baguio pero nandun sa may bandang T-Plex yung, uh, yung Basel. So doon muna siya nag-stay for a few months. Okay? So he stayed there for a few months. And then, nalaman ni sino yung person in Strasbourg responsible for the Reformation? It was Martin Boozer. Alright? Martin Boozer knew that John Calvin was staying in Basel. And he wanted John Calvin to go to Strasbourg. At ano yung purpose niya of inviting John Calvin? No, it was not for simply studying or even pursuing what he wants. Rather, the purpose of inviting John Calvin in Strasbourg is to become a pastor once again. He initially de declined, siyempre, given na nangyari sa Geneva. But Boozer knew the trick that would... Um, encourage, not only encourage, but would compel Calvin to accept the call to become a pastor. Kinausap niya si William Farrell and he asked for some advice and the trick that he has pulled from the sleeve of William Farrell is to pronounce the judgment of God against John Calvin saying that you're gonna be like Jonah running away from God if you do not accept the call to become the pastor. Ano yung nag reaction ni John Calvin? Of course, natakot siya. 
having been disturbed by the thought of God's judgment, Calvin accepted the call of becoming a pastor. Of course, usually naman in the first instance, uh, like in the, the city of Geneva, Calvin would be reluctant. Hindi niya gusto yung gagawin niya. But as we can see, he would pursue the endeavor with much faithfulness. And this is something that we would see as well as he becomes a pastor in the city of Strasbourg. Let us now look at the ministry of John Calvin in Strasbourg. So it was a brief but fruitful stay as he engaged in not only becoming a pastor, but Calvin also had the privilege to be able to study and write. To say that Calvin was really a busy person, pag tiningnan natin mamaya yung, yung kanyang ministry, it would be an understatement. His days are packed with ministerial duties. In fact, see Philip Schaff in his book, The History of the Christian Church, he said, and I quote, He spent there three years in useful labors. He was received with open arms by Boozer, Capito, Hideo, Strum, and Niger, the leading men in the church. These were the men that were responsible for bringing the gospel in Strasbourg. So, hindi na magisa si, ano, si Martin Boozer dito, but he also had other colleagues who helped in the Reformation in Strasbourg. And appointed by the Council Professor of Theology with a moderate salary, he soon felt at home and in the next summer, bought the citizenship. Okay? It was told that his support was also insufficient. So, sakto lang yun sa kanyang pamumuhay. But he also needed support for his studies. And so, what he did is that, nung binigyan siya ng tahanan sa Strasbourg, he also accommodated some borders in his home. Para doon yung mga income niya, he would use that to buy the resource that he needs in order for him to be able to study. And by securing his citizenship in the city, we can see that Calvin really wanted to stay in Strasbourg for good. You know the plan niya. He's not going to go back to France anymore. And definitely, he doesn't want to go back to Geneva again. But he would be. Later on, may kita natin yun. So, ano yung ginawa niya? What did he do as the minister of God in Strasbourg? First, he pastored the church. Boozer's ministry have laid the foundation of the Reformation prior to John Calvin's arrival in the city. Like in Geneva, yung task niya doon ay hindi mag-evangelize. There were some Christians there already. Meron naman Christian ron. His task is not to plant seeds, but to actually water and nourish the ground. Yun yung task niya rito. The church was relatively structured. Preaching is taking place. The observance of the sacraments are also happening. In fact, si Calvin would only propose that from, uh, from a less frequent observation of the Lord's Supper, pinagawa niya monthly para mas madalas ang observance nito. Church discipline is already taking place as well. They have offices. And Boozer identified four offices in the church. Number one, the pastor. Number two, the doctor. Hindi yung doctor na phys physician na. This is the doctor meaning ito yung parang professor of theology nila. There were elders. Ito yung mga nag attend sa mga congregation. Not necessarily preachers. So yun yung, yun yung difference of view nila. And they also had deacons who will be in charge on the physical and the, the practical matters within the church. He pastored about 400 French refugees under his care, and he preached to them eight to nine times every two weeks. So just imagine, on a Sunday, twice twice he preach, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And then come um, the weekday, every day meron din siyang preaching engagement. Okay? And then the following week, ganun eh. And repeat, preach and preach lang. Patuloy niyang sineshepherd ang, ang flock. And on top of that, he would make visits. He will take care of the sick. And apparently during this time, ito yung lumabas yung bubonic plague in which a lot of the members of the church would, was, were also affected and counseled those who were persecuted from the word of God. 
Kasi rampant din ang persecution during that time. So Calvin took the responsibility in shepherding the church apart from the authority of the state. Unlike in Geneva, he had the freedom to lead the church in light of scripture and as he sees the need fit. As he, as he, he sees fit yung pangangailangan ng church. Second, hindi lang niya kinip sa kanyang sarili ang leadership. He wanted to make sure that he is also passing on and training future ministers. Any ba ang view ni Calvin dito? He really had a high view on the office of the eldership. Calvin viewed the preaching ministry of a pastor to be central and required the ministers to be thoroughly educated, thoroughly educated in the original language, Hebrew and Greek, and as well as theology. He knew that the church could only grow in the grace of God through God's authoritative word, word handled rightly. And so he wanted to make sure that anyone who would come up to the pulpit, who would become future ministers of the word of God, are able, are equipped, and have that capability to be able to faithfully handle the word of God. And so he worked together with John Strum and as well as Martin Boozer, and they established an academy in which he engaged in academic debates with the students and as well as conducting exegetical lectures on the book of John, on Corinthians, Philippians, and the letter of Paul to the Romans. And as we would know later on, na yung exegetical engagements niya would later on become fruitful as he would publish commentaries from various books from the, from the Bible. Sinabi ni John, as quoted by W. Robert Godfrey in his book, John Calvin, Pastor and Pilgrim, when I expound the Holy Scripture, I must always make this my rule, that those who hear me may receive profit from the teaching I put forward and be edified unto salvation. If I have not that affectation or behavior, if I do not procure the edification of those who hear me, I am a sacrilege, profaning God's word. He did not simply honor and recognize and receive the scriptures for what it is, being the word of God itself, but he knew that as the minister of the word of God, he had the responsibility to take the word of God, the people of God, for the glory of God. And the ministers, he believed, are most able and effective when they are rightly trained to handle the Word of God. And therefore, he did much efforts in training the future generation of ministers of the Word. Third, he produced important writings. So sinabi natin kanina, he did not just pastor, but he also wrote and studied. He had the liberty to write on top of his pastoral ministry. So, if we imagine that he was pastoring a church with 400 members, being accountable to, to Christ for 400 souls, visit, visiting them on a reg regular basis, consoling them, taking care of them. But at the same time, he was pa si, si Calvin. And in fact, we would. So, uh, if you would read the biographies of Calvin, siya yung tipong tao na hindi masyadong natutulog. Hindi masyadong kumakain. In fact, ayaw niya nang kumain dahil busy siya sa kanyang pag-aaral. He only ate one time, uh, kumbaga isang, isang beses na si isang araw siya kumakain. And bukod sa kagustuhan niya mag-aaral, meron din ang karam sa kanyang ano, sa kanyang chance. So that, that's also a, a factor. B.B. Warfield said, It was at Strasbourg that his literary activity as a Protestant man of letters really began. There, he transformed this little book, little book, 500 pages, The Institutes of 1536, 
which was not much more than an extended cate catechetical manual into an ample treatise on theology. So from being a little book on the introductory of the Christian life, now, sa kanyang second or first major revision, isa na itong full systematic theology. There too, he inaugurated a series of his epoch-making exposition of scripture with his noble commentary on the book of Romans. Thence too, he sent out his beautiful letter to Sadoleto, the most winningly written of all his controversial treatises. And there too was written that exquisite little popular tract on the Lord's Supper, which was the instruction and consolation of so many hundreds of perplexed fellow country men. His desire was for the people to know what the scripture primarily teaches. He really labored in making sure that the people of God has right theology. Calvin's ministry was to give clarity to it so that Christians would have the right knowledge of God so that they would benefit as they understand the person and work of Jesus Christ. So, ano na ba yung mga writings na sinabi dito? Institutes, first major uh, revision, the commentary to the Romans, his letter to Sadoleto in response to the Cardinal's appeal to the Church of Geneva to, sabi niya, balik na lang kayo dito sa Roman Catholic Church. Wala na si John Calvin. Let us go back to the old times, to the old ways. Kung saan mas nag-enjoy kayo before. And then, the church knew that it was only John Calvin who can actually make that response against Cardinal Sadoleto. At nagkagulo rin ang church nila sa kanilang understanding on the Lord's Supper. If you would recall the Marburg Colloquy, wherein si Martin Luther at si Zwingli ay nagtalo against the Lord's Supper. Martin Luther viewed that it is the physical blood and body of Christ that transformed daw yung, yung mga elements during the Lord's Supper. Pero si Zwingli sinabi niya, no, it's, a, it's merely a, a memory. It's just a commemoration. So dito sa treatise na ito, kinlarify ni John Calvin yung views ni Luther, kinlarify ni John Calvin yung views ni Ulrich Zwingli, at sinabi niya, nagkulang yung dalawa. <laughs> Sabi ni John Calvin, here is the right view. When the church gathers in the Lord's table, Christ is spiritually present in the supper. Yun yung kinlarify niya sa church. And it has provided instruction and consolation at nagkaroon ng clarity sa kanila kung ano ba yung tamang view natin on the Lord's Supper. And we would argue that the Lord's Supper is actually a means of grace para sa atin. And fourth, hindi lang siya nagpastor, hindi lang siya nag-train ng mga future ministers, hindi lang siya nagsudat, but he also represented the reformed in colloquies or yung mga discussions. And one thing that we have to note about John Calvin, hindi siya yung tipong divisive. He's not like the, the person who is parang... Uh, ito ako, ito yung conviction ko and I'm gonna be immovable unlike Martin Luther na talagang immovable siya sa kanyang conviction but John Calvin is a man who would really want to pursue Catholicity he wanted to, to appeal to those from the other camp he frequently engaged in conciliatory or parang reconciling discussions with the other camps with the German Protestants and even the Roman Catholic Church. William Van, Van Spitzker said, the Strasburgers saw in Calvin more than just an advocate for the Reformation in France. They also valued his presence at colloquies, as Melanchthon had attested because of his knowledge in the Bible, theology, and patristic. Sobrang valuable ni Calvin sa mga discussion na ito that these men who were engaging in those discussions would want Calvin to be present sa mga discussion na yun. Why? Because Calvin can quote scripture from memory. He can quote uh, the fathers, the church fathers, particularly si Augustine, from memory. And he knew his theology 
Kaya gustong gusto nila kasama. In fact, si Boozer required that Calvin be present in all those colloquies. His skills were, were put into good use in these discussions and he used it for a good purpose and that is to pursue unity in the body of Christ. In Strasbourg, he didn't just do ministry, nagkaroon din siya and arguably this is the most important thing that happened in the life of John Calvin. It is his misistry, yung kanyang marriage. Okay? Mrs. Tree. So, meron siyang ministry at meron din siyang Mrs. Tree. Okay? Kinasal siya in Strasbourg. So, medyo scarce lang din ang information about his wife. But Calvin, early on in his life, have seriously considered marriage. In fact, si Farrell at saka si Boozer, nagreto sa kanya. Marami silang dinala kay John Calvin. Marami silang uh, pinakita mga women in the church who would support John Calvin and become his wife. But Calvin had a particular standard sa isang wife. Here's what he has to say about the standard. Several have tried, kinote John Calvin, several, several had tried to find a wife for Calvin, who was 31 years old. Numerous women had shown interest. Wow, well, numerous women. Calvin had told his friend and matchmaker, William Farrell, what he wanted in a wife. The only beauty which allures me is this, that she be chaste. Not too nice or fastidious. Hindi niya sinasabi dito na gusto niya matapang, hindi ganun. Or ang ibig niya sabihin dito is that hindi ganun kaarte. Yun yung ibig niya sabihin. Economical, patient, and likely to take care of my health. In other words, ang gusto ni Calvin sa asawa, makadyos, simple, matipid, at maalaga. <laughs> Yan ang kanyang standard. So yung iba, sinasabi nila, baka, baka parang nurse ang ano. Parang nurse ang kailangan ata ni John Calvin dito, hindi asawa. <laughs> Kasi parang kailangan aalagaan siya. But, but you know, John Calvin has an ailing health. Yun yung problema sa kanya. And he knew exactly what he needs for a helpmate. Alam niya, he's just basically self-aware. And during that time, sabi ng mga ibang historian, Minsan, ang requirements ay nauuna bago yung mga affection. <laughs> Pero, he, may kita natin mamaya, dito sa quote ni Calvin, that he really loved his wife. He got married, kinasal siya sa isang widow na formerly na asawa ng isang Anabaptist na na-convert sa Reformed uh, view, who goes by the name of Idolet the Viewer. Okay, yun yung pangalan ng kanyang asawa, Idolet. So if John Calvin diagnoses our hearts as a factory of idols, he at least had an Idolet. Okay? So they had a son who died in infancy. Marami silang naging, uh, marami naging miscarriages ang kanyang asawa. So in the, um, they never had children, pero si Idolette had um, her children from the previous marriage. So naging ama din naman kahit paano, si John Calvin. And in fact, the opponents of John Calvin used this as, as an opportunity to mock him. Sinabi nila against Calvin, Oh, God is judging you. But you know what Calvin said? I didn't have any children, but God blessed me with many spiritual children. Their marriage would only last for nine years, 1540 to 1549. She died of illness. And this is another opportunity na ginamit ng kanyang mga kalaban. Sinabi, sinabi ng kanyang mga kalaban, masyadong busy, he bored his wife to death, all those things. But Calvin loved her so much that he grieved the loss of his wife. He knew the value and the ministry that his wife has undertaken in their marriage. This is what Calvin has to say. I have been bereaved of the best companion of my life. Of one who had it been so ordained would have willingly shared not only my poverty, but even my death. During her life, she was the faithful helper of my ministry. From her, 
I never experienced the slightest hindrance. For Calvin, his wife was a blessing from God as a great helpmate to him. So unlike the accusation of his critics, Calvin was a loving husband to his wife. It's just sad na nine years lang sila nagla, nag, ano, naglast because of the, the sickness that Idolet has contracted. So that was the summary of Calvin's ministry in Strasbourg. And so kung titignan natin, sounds like everything is going well. Okay? Everything is going well for him. He has his citizenship. Yung congregation niya accepted and appreciated him. He's able to both pastor and write and study. And above all, kinasal pa siya while he was there. But here's the thing. Geneva wanted Calvin back. Geneva wanted Calvin back because since the departure of Calvin, the city of Geneva, so ito yung titignan natin. This is the second point called back Calvin. The city of Geneva was in a state of political turmoil. Everything is chaotic. Yung mga city council nila are divided. They were abusing their power. The people in the city were engaged in gross immorality. And there were factions. In fact, they divided sila into three camps. Yung mga council, the Roman Catholics, and the ones who were supporting John Calvin and William Farrell. Now, in the midst of those political turmoil, nawala sa posisyon yung mga ibang nasa council, and those who were supporting John Calvin and William Farrell were able to get a place in the position of authority within the church. So, ang ginawa nila, they used their authority and they voted to have John Calvin back in Geneva. Yes, the city who once rejected and banished the Protestant preachers now wants him back. Si Calvin, he really loved the Church of Geneva. Even after being banished, he, um, the church was always in his mind, but he dreaded the thought of coming back to the city. In fact, he would even say that if there was a place that he would fear the most, it is Geneva. Ayaw niya bumalik dun. His past failures certainly crept in and caused him to become reluctant to the invitation. Pero, wedi siya magsulat para sa Geneva. He had great concerns for them. He wrote to them na pinaalala niya to, to, be, to be united. He wrote to them saying na dapat minimaintain ninyo ang inyong unity as a church because that is the will of God. And second, he made the reply to Sadoleto. Nung pinapabalik sila sa Roman Catholic Church, gumawa na reply si Calvin, he finished that wonderful work or reply within six days lamang. And next week, we'll talk about ano yung naging content nun? What were the accusations or what were the things that John Calvin addressed in that letter? So titignan natin yan on the, on the next lecture. But suffice to say for now that more than just a letter, it has become a wonderful treatise in understanding what Reformed theology is all about. So, bumalik nga ba siya? Bumalik nga ba si Calvin? Fast forward. Geneva reached out to Farrell. Farrell traveled from the city kung saan siya pumunta. Kinonvince niya si John Calvin. And Geneva itself asked Strasbourg for John Calvin. Ganun katindi yung effort nila. They really need him back in the city. They knew that it was only John Calvin who can put things in order in the church. So out of compulsion, with much delays by the way, sobrang nalate si John Calvin sa kanyang pagbabalik sa Geneva. Calvin returned to become the minister of God in Geneva. He's back for good. In fact, manantili sa Geneva up until his death as a pastor. And normally, kapag bumalik ang isang tao, let's say he's a prominent figure in the city, when he comes back, definitely this is going to be his time to make an address and to make it big. 
Yan yung kadalasan na ginagawa. Kumbaga parang this is the return of the comeback. But what did he do? After some brief remarks on the church order, he went back to the scriptures. Where he left off. Kung ano yung pinakahuling text na pinipreach ni John Calvin when he was interrupted in his first ministry in Geneva, binalikan niya yung text na yun. And he began preaching the word of God again. Sabi ni Spitzker, Calvin returns, retur- Calvin's return to Geneva happened without a fanfare. In his first sermon, he refrained from any harsh judgment about the past. Although everyone expected something unusual, he limited himself to a few words about the value and meaning of congregational office and of doctrine. Then he turned to the biblical text that he had been treating before his departure and continued his lectio continua to indicate that he regarded what had, ha- what had happened as a temporary interruption and in no way a relinquishing of his official ministry. So, kumbaga, he was miles away in Strasbourg, but he also still felt that he is still the pastor in Geneva. It's like Calvin was saying, no bumalik siya? As I was saying. Parang ganun yung dating. So, Calvin shows the Church of Geneva that God is the sole authority in the church by doing that. It was not himself. It was not Calvin's authority. It was not Calvin the solution to the problem of Geneva. But the church agenda is God's agenda. God would rule his church by means of his inerrant and infallible word. And he got back quickly to work. And para kay Calvin, ititinan natin yung ginawa niyang Sumunod na effort niya, aside from just returning back to Geneva, it's Reformation time. It is now time to put things in order. Now, ano yung mga technique ngayon na ginawa ni John Calvin? It has been how many years? From 1538 to 1541, mga three years, di siya nawala. Perhaps he had garnered a lot of experience, definitely dinala niya yun, as he has become the pastor once again in Geneva. But he did not employ new techniques in ministry. He did not become more fanciful in the way of his approach. No. It was back to the ordinary means. The preaching of the word. Eight to nine times a week perhaps or even more. Teaching the scriptures. Conducting conferences or yung kutawagin nila ay congregations every Friday. He reinstated the church discipline and excommunication with cooperation and uh, with cooperation and workarounds with the city government. Paratis matuloy pa rin ang excommunication against unrepentant members. He made the observance the observance of the Lord's Supper more frequent every month. Gaya ng ginawa niya sa Strasbourg. He established same church offices. Yung apat. Meron silang pastor, meron silang doctor, meron silang elder, and meron din silang uh, deacon. And held regular meetings with the leaders of the church. In other words, it's pretty much the same. Bumalik lang siya. In structure lang niya talaga ang church. The chaotic church is now being put together to become an actual church sanctified unto the Lord Jesus Christ. But if there's something that we would notice to Calvin, K. Calvin, dito sa kanyang pagbabalik, is that he's more gracious now. So, last week, ano yung pinoint out natin? He required absolute adherence on the confession. This time, not really. So, ang ginawa niya, he made a recommendation to have a, a an ordinance in the church, parang confession din ito, or constitution, pero this is something that will be reviewed by the city government. Ganun yung ginawa niyang approach. He became, he became more cordial to the city. Kasi gusto pa rin talaga ng city or ng mga councils. 
to really have that control over the ecclesial affairs. But recognizing na it would do more harm than good, then for Calvin, sige, let's take it that route. For as long as we would be able to proceed with our Reformation efforts. Ito yung sinabi ni Theodore Beza, ang kanyang colleague, about the busyness of John Calvin's ministry in the Church of Geneva. During the week, he preached every alternate. Kumbaga, mayat maya siya, nagpipreach. He lectured every third day or Tuesday. On Thursday, he presided the meetings of the presbytery or yung tinatawag nilang consistory, yung council nila. And on Friday, he expounded the scripture in the assembly, which we call the congregation. He illustrated several sacred books with most learned commentaries besides answering the enemies of religion and maintaining an extensive correspondence of matters of great importance. So he was a preacher, he was a pastor, he was the teacher, he was a leader of the church. He fulfilled all of those responsibilities. He was a great polemicist as well. Na he made sure that the errors that are being propagated in the church is something that is addressed. He, he's, uh, he's able to identify what is true and then hit the error right in the eye. Ganun siya katindi. He would not let a, an error to creep in. He would rather sacrifice and suffer for the sake of the authority of God, His scripture, to gain authority over His flock or His church. The Lord so blesses me to see that persons flock from Him, flock to Him rather, from all parts of the Christian world. Some to take his advice on in matters of religion and others to hear him. Hence, we have seen an Italian, an English, and finally a Spanish church at Geneva. One city seeming scarcely sufficient, scarcely sufficient to entertain so many nests. End quote. In fact, Geneva would later on be called a new Jerusalem. <laughs> Yun yung sa Geneva. Dahil iba't ibang mga nation na ang pumupunta sa Geneva dahil they found refuge in the city. Thanks to the efforts. Thanks to God for using the efforts of this man, this is John Calvin. And suffice to say that surpassing contribution were not in vain. We are indebted to God for this man whose impact went through the walls of Geneva and beyond. Some lessons to take from, from the life of John Calvin. So we were only able to, to cover the first part ng gusto natin makita on his ministry and work. But what are some of the lessons that we can take from here? So number one, it is imperative to us to seek God's glory above all. We are called His people. We are redeemed by His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are called to live lives sanctified unto Him. Calvin recognized that, that reality and therefore sought to lead the church unto holiness. And hindi ito unique lang sa Strasbourg. It was also something that he did. It is first ministry in Geneva and as well as his second ministry in Geneva. Pero yung tanong siguro sa atin, how is he glorified in our lives? Is it our desire to seek the glory of God in everything that we do? Regardless of our calling, our vocation, our the things that we, we think of, what are some of the things that goes through our mind when we are left alone with ourselves? What do we make use of the spare times that we have? Seek God's glory above all. Recognize the sufficiency of the scripture. In it, we find the words of truth, the gracious work of Christ, and all that he gives to his people. How is the scripture shaping our lives as believers of the Lord? How does God exercise His authority sa ating mga buhay? Sa mga decisions na ginagawa natin? Are we 
seeking the wisdom of God in our lives, in our ministry to one another as a church? Are we allowing the Spirit of God working through His Word to take control sa ating mga buhay? Third, maintain church order. Hindi lang ito yung dapat pare-pareho tayo. Kailangan meron tayong schedule. It's more than that. It's really allowing the biblical structure or biblical design na tinuturo sa atin na scripture para sa ating church. Yes, sasabihin natin na, okay, the main thing is to have a faithful preaching of God's word, which is good. Kailangan talaga yun. Important yun. Without the preaching of the word of God, then definitely um, we, we ought to uh, take away ourselves from it. There has to be a faithful proclamation of God's word. But the church ought to be the church. Sanctified unto the what way do we see this order in our church? Merong church offices. There's a an elder. There are deacons as taught in scripture. Sacraments are being administered. Prayers are taking place within the body of Christ. There's membership. And of course, there's church discipline, both formatively and as well as correctively. Because if we seek to live as people of God, we ought to have the proper discipline that is being administered by Christ towards His church. How are we showing our appreciation dito sa ating mga means of grace na ibinigay sa atin ng Panginoon? Nagpapasalamat ba tayo dahil sa means of grace ng Panginoon, tayo ay nag-grow sa ating sanctification na ginagamit niya ang ating mga fellow members to rebuke us, to help us grow into maturity. Let us show appreciation to God's ordained means and ultimately to God Himself. Pero let me add a bonus. Number four, theology is practical. Theology is practical because the right knowledge of God leads us to the right knowledge of man. And with the right knowledge of man, we would recognize that we are made in the image of God who has been marred by sin, who has fallen, who has fallen short of the glory of God. And the only hope that we have is to place our faith in the one and only provision of God in the person and work of Christ, our Savior, who, number one, lived a perfect life, second, died on the cross, for the sins of his people as a substitute who would took upon himself the wrath of God and third, after the third day, he rose again from the dead. And so understanding this reality should lead us not into licentiousness, not into a life of sin, but an ordered Christian living. That ends my lecture for draft yun. Hindi ko natanggal yung slide. So, any case, so that ends my lecture for, for the day. So, that ends my lecture for the day. So, next week, we're gonna do a second part on Calvin's contribution sa sa kanya ministry and work. Part 2. So at this point, I'd like to take in some questions related to our topic. Hello. Kui Jan. Kuya John, hello. Okay. Um, ano, clarification lang po, ano po yung four offices na na-restore sa Geneva? You, uh, pastor, did you mention doctor? 
So yung four offices na in-identify ni Calvin in, in Geneva is similar to the, the four offices that Booser identified in Strasbourg. So yun yung pastor, yung doctor, or the teacher of theology, yung elders, yung mga nag-aalaga spiritually, uh, but not necessarily preachers, sa church, and as well as deacons. So, ang kaibaan sa atin, in CHC, uh, yung understanding natin sa church ay we have only two church offices. And that is the office of the elder, who is responsible for the pastoring, the teaching, the preaching, and as well as the shepherding of the church and the deacons who are in charge basically on the, the temporal or yung mga practical affairs na But during that time, I guess, yun yung need because of the size of the congregation. Thank you. So clarification also, um, I made mention in the Marburg Colloquy na ang view ni Luther ay nagta-transform. Sorry, I, I'm, uh, I stand corrected. Ang view ni Luther, ni Luther ay nare-retain ang, ang elements, pero Christ is present along with the elements. So para nagko-combine yung bread and wine uh, with, together with Christ. Ganun. So yun yung, ano, yun yung view ni Luther. Apologies for that. Uh, yung, yung question ko kasi nga diba si ay- ayaw ni John Calvin noong una and then so tinreten siya sorry ayaw ni yung call to become the pastor okay uh, and then Martin Boozer threatened Calvin or in a way parang intense persuasion para to answer the call so I think y- yung question ko is parang i- is there like today do, do churches actually do that or c- can we do that like is there like a formal way of per well i don't want to say threatening pero parang formal way of persuading someone to accept the call na i think for further context parang na recognize naman ng church na na pwede to mag pastor or parang or call lang ba yun ng ng elder na ayaw niya huwag na natin pilitan or is there a way na formally like the church will do like some way na ganong persuasion thank you brother so first chapter 3 verse 1 sinabi ni Timothy ay sinabi ni Paul kay kay Timothy the saying is trustworthy if anyone aspires to the office of an overseer he desires a noble task so primarily if we're going to talk about someone who would become a pastor of a local church number one, he must desire the office yun muna he must desire the office pero bukod sa desire of course titingnan natin dito yung kanyang uh, gifts and graces. So, doon napapasok yung uh, above reproach, husband of one wife, able to teach, able to manage his household well, uh, keeping dignity, keeping all dignity, uh, yung children are submissive, not a drunkard, not a uh, recent convert. So, unang-una, um, the candidate, sabi mo na natin, the candidate, must desire and aspire for the office. Now, there are some Uh, members in the church na at times may kita na oy parang um, okay na magturo okay yung theology uh, parang gusto namin siyang mag uh, magpastor kasi may nakikita namin yung parang giftedness niya and then sabi nung tao na no no ayoko talaga i don't desire uh, at that point the church should ordinarily not force ang ang tao who may be gifted with the ability to pastor seemingly ayaw naman talaga he doesn't desire now of course tatanungin natin bakit sa case si John Calvin pinilit bakit ngayon sa case si John Calvin pini in a way para pinilit siya no parang there's this uh, imprecatory curse no you can know you parallel and the judgment of god from from Martin Boozer i don't think And I would argue na hindi niya binasara ang office. Kasi, sinabi niya sa commentary on the Psalms, he was just hindered on the fact na mahiyain siya. That he was just bashful. 
that he didn't have that personality and he did not believe in himself in himself na kaya niya magpastor pero i don't think that he did not desire the office kasi later on if he did not desire the office i don't think we would see much fruit in his ministry i don't think he would have that heart for the for the flock of god i i don't think he would um, console the persecuted members of his church but as we can see later on dun tinakita yung fruitfulness niya so thank you <laughs> hello kuya uh, yung question ko kuya Sino yung favorite JC mo? Mali ba kayo dyan? Oh, lang, hindi yan. Ah? Yung... <laughs> ano na? <laughs> Serious question ko, Kuya. Kasi, uh, I believe gusto natin uh, why we study uh, church history is for us to imitate these godly men, di ba? So, is it good for us to imitate uh, yung zeal ni John Calvin? na, di ba, sa sobrang zeal niya mag-aaral and magturo, hindi na siya kumakain. Or even sa mga elders, na it's good for uh, sa mga ministers, elders na gayain na itong uh, zeal ni John Cobb. Test one, two. Test, test. Test. Okay. So, imitating the zeal, um, why not? Pero not to take care of yourself, we, of course, we do not recommend that. Na, especially if uh, our, we have to understand that we are, as human beings, we are body and soul. We have to take care of ourselves rightly. Our bodies are given to us as a stewardship from God Himself. And um, there's a way for us to really allow that zeal to take, take place and not sacrifice the well-being of our bodies and not become a faithful steward. So go ahead, pursue the zeal. Have that kind of zeal for, for the word, for study of theology. But I would recommend that you hindi na kailangan na mag-aalaga. Kain tayo. <laughs> oh. So, pag may pa-passing kayo doon sa window period nyo, kain kayo. Thank you, Kuya. Any more questions? Meron? <laughs> Siya. Actually, it's almost similar question with Jane. Um, since we're studying this to find out what we should be emulating, what are the things naman about John Calvin that we shouldn't be? Because baka malahat na we should like John Calvin is a great man. Na we might forget that he's a sinner also. Yeah. So what are the things that we shouldn't be? So, kung babalikan natin, our purpose of our study is to really see and trace the work of God in the life of John Calvin. And Calvin would even, um, as some, some theologians would say, that he would have great discomfort in us talking about John Calvin. And he himself have said that, uh, follow other men for as long as they lead you to, to Christ. But for your question, in terms of what not to emulate, in one of the things that I've read, I'm not, I forgot lang exactly who, who mentioned this, is that, um, of course, lahat naman tayo makasalanan, no? And John Calvin particularly struggled with his temper. So, may ano siya, may, while he has that kind of Catholic spirit or parang, uh, uh, He's, like, he's a type of person who, who would always pursue the unity in the church. He also had particular struggles with his, uh, with his temper. So second to that, of course, we have to be, we have to be faithful stewards of our bodies as well. Alagaan natin na ating mga sarili. Uh, but of course, we could also say na si Calvin struggled with his health. Uh, kaya isa rin yung sarisin ko bakit once, once a day lang din siya kumakain. So 
but again, recognize that ultimately we do not look upon this person. Uh, again, just a warning, we do not look upon this person and say that kailangan gayahin natin siya in every way. Uh, in fact, yung mga, yung mga writings said there are some um, interesting views then na we would not necessarily agree with. So, yeah, we just have to, to recognize that as well. Uh, unrelated. But, um, what is it? You said kasi na when Calvin went back, he didn't ask for 100% adherence anymore and he submitted a parang confession to the government. Baka I didn't understand from last time lang. Did he ask for 100% um, uh, adherence to, for, sa whole ng Geneva or yung, yung church lang? The church in Geneva, particularly. So, um, you last time his first ministry there was he required 100% of the members to adhere dun sa confession na kanilang ginawa, and he even mentioned that those who would not adhere to the confession should be banished from the city. Isa yun sa mga ano, sa mga naging proposition niya. Pero nung bumalik sila, recognizing na that's how the kalakaran in the in the city of Geneva, so they did some some ambiguity lang in order to really structure the church on the outset muna so, last question before we prepare for our pm worship So, okay. So, so questions. Um, if you have uh, clarifications on the lecture, please feel free to reach to me. Dito lang ako while we're preparing, or even chat me na lang via Telegram as well.